Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talk Junkies, where today is going to be a very interesting day, a very exciting day. Um, we don't have Johnny and Jesse in the house. Just uh, They may be working or sleeping. I'm not entirely sure what they're doing, but they're doing something. But either way, the, the podcast must go on. We're a few days uh, out of our, our typical days whenever we record, but uh, last week we didn't have a guest on. It was just Johnny and I talking about our usual stuff. But this week we have the pleasure of bringing on an author. And honestly, right now, with how dismal things are and how just, you know, if you tune into the news and you see and you watch what is going on in the world today, I don't, I think it's the most important thing to bring on this author because what he talks about, and I'm going to let him describe it as love and love is something that I think, you know, um, I'm going to find out today. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit talking about love. I'm going to let uh, Juan Lee, how are you doing, man? What's going on? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me, Paul. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. So, um, Love Made Simple. I got the book right there in the middle. There'll be links in the description below and on how to find you and how to find the book. I did dive into it a little bit. I, you know, um, I do have two young children. I mean, I'm not making excuses. I can still read, but I did get a chance to read a little bit of it. Um, so, uh, what led you to re- uh, writing this book, my man? Well, I, I tell you, I tell you, Paul, um, other than the fact of it's a little about my life story and what I have, how I've accomplished uh, where I am and I've done what I've done. I'm, I'm currently, um, I've retired after 30 years of uh, employment in various occupations. Um, I was at one time, I, I, I spent 10 years in the military, nine years in the military. I spent uh, years in manufacturing, law enforcement, security. Um, and uh, my background is I've been a Christian, all, I, you know, 30 years all my life as much. And as I went through my journey, I basically saw that there we have a we're we're divided, not only as a country, but as a world in a world we're as, as a world we're divided. And the one common denominator I saw was that the only place we hear about love. That we even in, in, that we even begin to hear about the what love is, is basically in our local churches and our in religions, whether it's the mosque or the synagogue or the church. And those are the sources, in many cases, of our division. They begin to identify and separate us into finding or identifying who God is. And what my journey was, was to separate that, to take religion out of it and find love at its purest thing. Because we look at, if, if you want to be, to identify with love, you have to identify with a particular God or religion. But, but love is bigger than any denomination. It's bigger than any sect. It's bigger than anything that could divide us. And and when we begin to to see the very system that's meant to bring us together, used to divide us, I said that there's gotta be something wrong with this picture. (laughs) There's gotta be something wrong with this picture. And so my journey was to writing this book was to show that we can unify but we need something to unify around so that we can begin. And love's that tool. Love's that tool that gives us the connection that we need one to another that can allow us to be successfully successful together, collectively, as a whole. And, I, and, and what that connection is to get to that meaning or to that end is that we're human. Each and every one of us in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our states, in our country, in the world, we have that thing in common, humanity. We all practice it a little bit differently, but the fact of the matter is, is that together collectively, the world makes up humanity. And if we could, This came very clear to me. Let me explain to you. It came very clear to me um, when I joined the military, ironically enough. 
because in the military, I found that there was a group of people come from various places in the country around, the, you know, having various backgrounds. We were, came together with common attitudes to reach a common end or purpose, goal. And that system repeated itself week after week, month after month, year after year, to, to obtain the exact same objective. It didn't matter who we were individually. What it mattered was is we all had the same objective with the same um, attitude, meaning that I was vested in this thing for what I had to offer. It didn't matter what level or what, what it was that I had to offer is that I had something to offer and it was sufficient and it was necessary to meet the objective, to meet the mission. And that's what love does. See, love gives us all, love has three characteristics. The first one is, is that it's a chameleon, meaning it is adaptable and it, it fits in and it makes itself, and here's the big thing, it will, it will basically suppress your own individual opinion or belief for the purpose of the whole. That means it's gonna take a sacrifice for you to be able to, to, to get in there. But the fact of the matter is, is that your portion has a place in this big picture if only we would blend in, if we would become a part of, instead of trying to stick out and be separate from the whole. So why 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 is that? Why are we kind of uh, <clears throat> led astray and not really taught what love is? Like you said, you really only find it in the churches. It's something you're not taught whenever you're in grade school. <clears throat> you know, I think it's inherent in all of us, you know, depending on how you're raised as a child what love is, but you're really not taught, you know what I'm saying? Like how you're kind of describing, why is that? Why don't they, or whoever they is, or why doesn't society want love to flourish to where everyone is doing what you're describing? That, that's very interesting because it's very, we have the human element is that we ultimately have love is a choice, okay? And I think for the most part, it, it revolves around the fact that we don't know why we are here on the earth. <laughs> Collectively, I don't think we know. And what love does is what I've come to find out is, is that love is, has a purpose and it's, it's a system that allows us to know why we exist here on the earth. But if we don't know what that answer is, and we're here trying to figure it out, everybody's trying to figure it out. And so I have a way of figuring it out. You have a way of figuring it out. And guess what? It works. And so when it comes down to you versus me, and my figuring it out works for me, I don't want to be concerned about you and how you would work because this is what works for me. And so what I've realized is that with humanity, if we understand that the reason why we're here, the reason life exists is that it's to prolong and protect and preserve humanity. And our experience here in this earth is temporary for the purpose of investing into humanity for the continuation of humanity. See, we don't, we don't want to acknowledge the fact that we want to say that life is short. It ain't short, it's, it's exactly how long it's supposed to be. <laughs> See, life is a system, it's a, it's a cycle. And we're just a cog in this cycle. And if we don't understand that or know that, we're searching for something for ourselves to try to make sense of this thing. And if we can't make sense of it, it surely I'm not gonna allow you to make sense of it for me because you can, I gotta live my experience 
you got to live your experience, but we're still shooting in the dark because we have no idea why we're here, what we're here to do. What's the, remember I said when I went into the military, we had two things. It was a common attitude and a common objective. We had a common goal. If we as collectively don't know that we're here to preserve and protect or to preserve and protect humanity, we'll destroy it. And we're doing a real good job of it. So has within your research, has there been a time maybe on earth, and I, I don't know if this would be easy or hard to find, where maybe love was more of a thing back in like a different culture or a different age. I mean, from what's told to us in, in the history books, and, and I'm a firm believer of the, Vic, the Victor Wright's history, so who knows what truly happened way back in the day. But we've had um, other authors on like Howdy Mikowski, and he kind of suggested that maybe there was a golden era sometime in human history where love was more prevalent and um, those people lived a, a, maybe a more purposeful life because of that, because they were more uni unified. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I get what, I'm, what, what we're doing is, is that we've, we've moved. If, if there was a time and space like that, we've been progressively moving away from it yep. to the point where we're divided at every corner. Yes at every corner. And if we don't stop to really uh, recognize the fact that we're never, we're not intended to be divided. See, if nothing we've learned through this, this um, pandemic that we're in is that as individuals, we cannot tolerate this division. We cannot say that we, we can't do what we wanna do and be engaging as we are as people wanting to engage one another. We've been resistant to wanting to do the things that is beneficial because it's not in our nature to be separated. But yet we don't realize that in this particular time and nature and space, you know, for what we're up against, we've got to fight against that, which is naturally inclination to be around one another for the sake of protecting one another. And so, but in innately, we want to be around people. We want one. We want to be connected. We, it, it's here's the thing: we cannot survive without connection. We really need one another. When we divide ourselves, we begin to define ourselves, and we're nothing apart from one another. We are collectively humans. We make up humanity. That's beautiful, man. Um, so, and, and I completely agree. Uh, I couldn't agree any anymore. So my question would be next is how do we understand love specifically? I mean, I know there's different types of love. I think that you kind of describe in the book and I like, honestly, I, I love how you paint it out for what, where, wherever you're at in your life. And I think that's really interesting. Um, if you're young, if you're an adult, if you're kind of just on the older side, you know, you paint a picture for each stage, man. And, and I think that's awesome. But how do we understand love and, and kind of get to this collective? It, it, it's basically when we can recognize it, and this is what the characteristics are. When you recognize that you have an end goal and that is to invest into humanity, you have to invest into humanity. It's just not, you're just not, you're, we, we want to, we're just passing through, but the passing through is an investment. And so we've got to have the idea of the mindset that we've got something to offer. And that's why it's very important that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, we are uniquely made. We are an originals. There will never be another. And that means that you have something that is unique. And that means that that investment is necessary into humanity so that we can prolong and preserve humanity. We have to push it on down the road. We've got to have a mind shift change. But how do you recognize it? Is when you're willing to invest that, that, that uniqueness in someone else. That's what it is. It's a giving. It's not a receiving, it's a giving. And it's when you have what, it, what someone else needs, it brings you gratification, gives you refill, fulfillment. It's like when you see, your child smiled on their face. That's the best feeling a parent can have. But the fact of the matter is, is because you gave of what you had and they received it and accepted it with pleasure. And that's what, that's what love does. And see, we've got to understand that value 
is not in, in things. It's in what our investment, it's the ability to invest into humanity. It brings the reward. It brings us that gratification, that fulfillment that we all, and we desire. We desire that fulfillment of knowing that our measure was important. Someone else had a need for it and it provided that need that they had. It's nothing like, it's no more different than business. You go out and create a business and you go like, what do people need? So you create it, you, you, you decide I'm gonna provide that which needs it. And there's a cycle, it's a cycle. You give and they, they pay for it. You give and they pay for it. It just keeps on doing it. It's a system. That's what life is. And we are, we are participating, participants in it. But the fact of the matter is, is that very few of us recognize it. Very few of us recognize it and understand that we have value if only we understood the bigger picture. We are a part of something very big. And, and the way I like to explain it is, is that we're standing on the shoulders of history. And one day, someone will be standing on our shoulders in the future. If we don't invest shoulders into it, we don't give them what to stand on, unity, something, we, we, if we continue this to, to um, fragment humanity, it's only gonna continue to, 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 to bring forth more and more division. Dividing humanity is like trying, it, it's sort of like your body, um, my body. It only works collectively together. I can't put my arm over on, on, on leave it in the, the one room and take my leg and put it in another room. It only works together the way it's supposed to. Now we can, we can pretend that, you know, I don't need the arm, so I'm gonna just lower, throw it over there until it's time to pick up something. And then you say, okay, what do I have to do? So yeah, you'll, you'll try to compensate. And that's what the body does, it compensates. But if you don't know that you don't have to compensate, you'll always be compensating. Do you think that um, love is, is kind of like water, like the most powerful thing that in existence? And that, that's just kind of how I look at it. Like water triumphs everything, and, and let, you know, it, unless there's a void. But um, You're absolutely right. So it is. Right. So my question is, um, and we've done, if you look back at any of our old content, man, like we, what we've come to kind of figure out and is that humans are inherently greedy. And we're nars, you know, selfish and greedy. And if you ever get into a position of power, you're always going to have that greed and and want more. And like you just see these the the most elite of the elite people that live on this this earth. I would be interested to know how much love is in their body, you know, because it is their goal to unify the world. Because if that's the case, you know, that's not what is portraying in front of us. So I guess what I'm saying is, do you think love will triumph greed and hatred? out of man and woman here here's 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 the good the thing that very interesting the other the 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 final part of love is is that it's a choice it's a choice and the thing about it being a choice is that that's what makes it the most powerful thing on the earth because if we collectively as humans choose to show love to one another there's nothing that no one can do to stop it. Nothing. Nothing. It is absolute. See, and but here's the point. Now, here's the flip side of it, though. If you don't want to, there's nothing that no one can do to make you. It's a choice. And that's what that's the message that I want to share is that it takes one person to start. It just takes one person to be willing to be vulnerable enough to say, I don't care what the world is saying. I'm going to choose to love. I'm going to choose it. And it's case by case, day by day, situation by situation. I had a very interesting uh, interview uh, a month or so ago 
And the guy that did the interview, he has he has a couple of different hats, but one of the things that he does is that he has a financial consulting business and he had a client, he did a proposal for a client. And I, I hope I'm not understanding, but the gist of it was is he, he did a proposal for a client to do work for their company. And he used an example or the name of his company was called, oh man, um, I can't remember what it is right now, but it was an insulting name or word to one of the employees of the company that he was submitting a proposal to. And it was it was having to do with the Indian um, um, population. Um, the name of his company was called, forgive me for, I, I can't remember, but it was an insulting word towards Indian, the Indian population. And it got back to the owner of the company. And the gist of it was the owner changed the name of his company. Nobody made him, he chose to do it. He didn't have to, he could have been like, oh, that'd have been one client I don't have to have. But he changed the name of his company. Do you know in business what he just did? It's like changing your name in real life, I would assume, or close to it. You think about what business means. Business and branding is everything. And he had been in business for 10 years. <laughs> See, that's an example that he said that I'm going to love. I'm going to demonstrate the compassion for someone else even at my expense, that's love. Or, I mean, I, I would say that is definitely a form of love, but I mean, also in a politically correct world, you know, people are kind of scared of what the repercussions are and stuff like that. But I mean, in, in that instance, yeah, a hundred percent, you changed your business name. That's, that's saying something. You got to understand I'm in the area, you're in Missouri, I'm in Washington, DC or in Maryland, right outside of it. What's the name of our football team this year? Washington football team. Yeah. They have been pressing him, and this didn't happen until last year. They have been pressing him about that name for as long as this owner has owned the team. It's a long time. And he was unwilling to even entertain it until last year. The climate of the country affected his wallet, and he decided to change the thing. So would you say that's like, is that love or is that more? I guess that's, that, that's economic empowerment. That, that's, yeah. the, that's the, that's the, that money talked. Yeah. And they said, they said, don't change it. And the NFL said, don't change it. And you ain't on the team. Well, I'm kind of curious too, because the, the, the chiefs are heading, not, it's, it's not as aggressive, but there are people who do, do want the chiefs to change their name as well. But the story is, I forget the story behind the name of the, the Kansas city chiefs, but it was, it's not in a derogatory term or anything like that, but. Oh, but you, the, 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 the Washington team name. Oh yeah. Yeah. Extremely. Yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad that changed, man. Um, yeah. So we'll get back to the book, man. So what, what do you think is like the most, I mean, and I know you've kind of went a little bit over it. Are there any like hidden Easter eggs or anything that has more meaning to it than, than it's supposed to in the book that if I read it, I might catch, or is it something that I need to, you want me to read it first before you tell me? No, no, because to be honest with you, um, the gist of it, um, it's chapter by chapter. And like you said, the biggest part is, is that it's a, something in there for every generation. If it's for teenagers, young adults and adults and seniors, because collectively, you're always going to have those stages in life operating together. And even in many cases, we have a tendency to not look at our elderly people yep. um, as for as as being as vital as or as, as productive in our society as the, the, the adults or the, the, you know, that generation between maybe 20 and 40, you know, it's, that's, that's, that's the real um, produ producers right there and at 20 to 60, maybe or 20 to 50. Um, and so I, I, I broke it out so that everybody understood or had a, had a place and that there's value 
to if I'm 15 or 18 years old, that I can look to a senior and say that there's value there. And, and as a 60, as a 60 year old, I can help that child, that, that 20 year old, navigate this thing called life based on my experience, some experiences that I've had. Now, in, sin, in many cases, that could be harmful in some cases um, because of the generational traumas that we've had around us in years past. And that's, that's I believe, we're having some, some, re, some friction in that area also because what was normal for, me, for instance, in my generation, um, in, in our culture, in our society, it's different than it is for a 25-year-old um, growing up today in the culture. And I have to be able to understand um, that love is necessary to be able to let things change without being held back by the past. So when I communicate with the younger generation, I can't give them um, my pain. I have to give them love for the time in which they're in, because this is going to be, that generation is gonna be my future. It's gonna be the future generation for me. And it's how will I impart my, what will I invest into them? so that they can be able to move and protect and preserve humanity into the future. Um, so the book is, is meant to, to capture everybody. Um, but the main message is, is that, you know, we've got to choose to want to, um, to impact humanity. We got to understand that purpose is not a, it's not a secret. And it's not, it's not something that everybody has to figure out for themselves. You know, any other system that you get involved with, you find out where you fall, you get in the system, and it produces. So it seems like there's a lot of sacrifice involved in 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 what is love. And is there like a, I know you said that you've kind of, like within your book, you've kind of reached the level of what love is, and, and you know how to express it and, and invest it like you're talking about, but two questions Juan uh, the first being sacrifice and a lot of people are not comfortable with sacrifice and that's just the type of climate we're in so it, are there baby steps that worked for you or worked for other people who have read your book that kind of you know made it easier for people to sacrifice or invest into love you know what I'm saying and invest in back into society yeah um you know one of the things I was I was just thinking about that and I was thinking, everyone asked, what are the steps, the things that we can do to just get involved or to get closer to this understanding of love? Um, and, and, I, and I wrote some things down. I hadn't had a chance to, um, to transfer them to my paper. Um, but it was, let me just see here for a second, because that was, that's a very critical point that I want to share. Um, because that that's 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 good. I mean, here's the thing. It's about feeling that we we need each other. If we can have a mindset to understand that we're not in this world to, to as separate, if we can just imagine the fact that we, we need each other. There is no success in this world that is individualized. You can't have a business without people. And when I say people, even on the internet, you, everybody's raving about internet businesses and stuff. Somebody has to purchase your product. You need somebody. Without people purchasing, you don't have a business. You have a giveaway. We need each other. And if we can see that value, and I was hoping that in this pandemic, that we began to, when we began to call people heroes that were oftentimes mis I mean, overlooked, that it would bring us to the understanding that we need each other. There is no insignificance. Anybody that's insignificant, nobody. If we can just begin to monitor the fact that the way we view, because this is all about attitudes. It's all about attitudes. If you change your attitude, we can change the world. If we change our attitudes, 
about one another. See value instead of division. It can change the world. That's Everybody it. has value. So for me, and I completely agree, man, like that, so much of what you're saying is, is, is honestly what I believe. Do I practice it? You know, probably not as much as I should. Um, just because like I say, I always bring it back to like, I feel like there's this overarching force and what's like the negative to love. What would be the negative? Is there like one specific thing that's, you know, like if there was a villain, hate, yeah, hate, I feel like that for some reason that that is overarching throughout the world and like you said, I, I think that if you get one or two and then two turns into five and then five turns into a hundred and a hundred turns into a thousand people participating in what is love, that's, that's what changes the game. I just don't understand how hate has gri- grippled our country and it's just taking it and it doesn't seem like it wants to leave, man. And, and I, and I don't know if that's just the media and just the type of culture and all that. I don't know. I don't get it. Like it's division. It's the way of being able to keep, what is the, the easiest way to conquer is to divide. Yep. But like, what's their purpose? I mean, I, I know this is kind of a side side subject, but in your opinion, like, what's the purpose behind that? Like, the why purpose do- behind dividing? Yeah. Is well, well, guess what? Our society drives on division. Capitalism drives on division. Every so every con- if if I can't divide, leaders use division to drive their power. It's amazing. Our country, just look about it. An election is made up of groups that politicians go after to see if they if they get this group and that group, these divided groups, if I can appeal these groups, I can win the election. It 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 dry, it's driven by keeping us divided. If we want it to be unified, if we really want, hey, is it necessary who's right as long as what's right? That's that's a choice. But we'll be, I hate to bring politics into it, but we'll be we'll be politically driven irrespective of what's best for the whole. That's that's what it is. Do 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 we want to see this? As a society, as a power hungry, wanting to be in power? No. But guess what? Nobody can stop you. You or me or anyone else, no one can stop it. We just got to choose to do it. It's a choice. It's do we, because here's the point. I don't care how much power you got. We all have an end game. All going to come to an end. Yep. This thing called life is temporary. And if if we don't understand that the pit the game is bigger than just you and I or the people in which we want to put in our circle, then it's going to be very difficult for us to love because it's about being outside of those circles. It's about stepping outside and seeing that I don't care where I am or who you are, we all have value. That's contrary in a lot of people's minds. But can you imagine if they decided to think in line with everybody having value? And it's not quantified based on um, levels. It's based on the fact that they're important because they are unique and not because they're of the fact that they are not like me or not like you, is that that their uniquenesses bring something to that chameleon that makes it what it is. So whenever you talk about like being in church and I know you're a Christian man, um, how do you, how did you separate it initially? Was it hard at first? Like, and I know you say, I mean, you you still practice religion and stuff like that, but, or I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know that I'll stop right there. But how did you separate yourself fr- from the, the stigma of that? Because, um, and I'll just go ahead and kind of dive in it. Cause in the book, you kind of explain it, you explain it greatly. How, how did you come to that? Well, because to be honest with you, I saw a lot of people just didn't get it. They just weren't getting it. They were, here's the truth of the matter is, is that religion teaches religion. It's another That's bit. what they all do. They teach religion. 
they enforce religion, okay? And, and love is a byproduct of it. And so I looked at it and I saw, I was like, how can, you remember when I spoke, I started off and I go, um, the one thing that we hear love at, we hear love in these institutions, right? But yet they practice division. And it, it almost is like, that's contrary. Now, don't get me wrong. I think religions have a place. They have a place. It's sort of like, um, if, if that's the only place you can hear about love, then I think you need to hear it, okay? But which where you hear it is not relevant to the need that you need to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you hear it at the mosque or you hear it at the, the synagogue or you hear it at the church or wherever you hear it, as long as you hear it, it's important to hear it. But then to say that that's the only way that you can hear it and, and separate yourself from others because they don't hear it the way you hear it, that defeats what it's all about. Yeah, that's not love. Yeah, it, that defeats the whole purpose. So let's, let's just use, and one of the things that I need to make clear is that my, 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 my message of love is from birth to death. I don't get into belief and faith. That's before birth and after death. That's not, everybody has to make that decision for themselves. Wonderfully that's said, a, man. I've never that's heard. A, in, that's an individual decision that you have to make. But collectively here in human, in, in earth, on with humanity, we have something in common. Let's keep the conversation where we can agree. No, that's, I, I, I've never heard it like that, man. I'm going to have to go back and listen to that one and put it on a t-shirt. I'm not even joking, man. So, um, so you were able to separate it from church and stuff like that. I mean, cause the church, it, it, I guess, like you said, it's just like anything else where they have a grip over a large amount of population. And like you said, like they kind of lead them astray. So I, I, you've already made the message very clear, man. And I, I feel like I'm backtracking, but you just have all these different forces that are just kind of telling you how to love and the church is one of them. And, and, and look what it's created. It's just more division. And I don't know. It's just, I think that we can get past the division. I'm a firm believer in that, that it, it like we've been talking about, it only takes a few people. Um, would you consider like yoga, like stuff like that, like spiritualness in Absolutely, because when you talk about, you know, granted, I'm not a big, I'm not big into a lot of the spiritual things and the yogas, but again, if you can identify with, if you can identify with the system of love, and the system of love duplicate, it reproduces itself. And if you can gather that in any kind of form that you want, um, uh, it has, it plays out with you and I, you, you, you practice it because it's not something that you do. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's like, what do I, what is my discipline? What is the thing that I follow in my processes throughout the day? If it's yoga, the concepts, that that generates that love for your neighbor, then that's 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 what we want. We want the engagement of one another because that's the collective. It's how we engage one another. Yeah, now I mean, everything's just starting to come more clear to me. Just at, just having this, you know, an hour conversation with you on just how love is misinterpreted and trying to truly understand it, you know, and looking at it from your perspective. I think it's very interesting. And it's something that isn't really uh, taught in a way to where people can just simply use it. I mean, like whenever you hear love, you're like, do you love your wife? And do you love your kids? And do you love your family? And I'm like, well, yeah, I love them. But they don't really go in, in depth and in context like you are to describe what is it really? You know what I'm saying? And for the average person, you'd be like, well, come on, Paul. I mean, that's easy. It's what you're talking about, sacrifice, humility, um, you know, all those other things. But that's not how it's portrayed. And that's not what we're taught. Like, whenever you found this out, Juan, like, was it an epiphany? Was it, like, eye-opening? Or how, how long have you been, were you, like, stuck in a rut? And then eventually you, you're you like, man, I'm done with this. I need to figure something out. And then, like, how did that process work? 
Okay, this is a little bit of a long story, but I will I will cut to the chase. The the gist of it is that I have I had I have an undiagnosed learning disability until I was 37 years old. I was frustrated, I was depressed, I mean, I was confused. Um, and religion didn't help with any. I didn't even know that I had a learning disability. Again, like I said, until I was 37 years old. I went through high school was not measuring up. I went into the military and that was when things clicked for me because I found value in not having to measure up. I had purpose, I had value and people, and, and I was being measured against something that I had no idea. I was fighting a ghost. I was like telling everything that I was being told was negative. I was like, you won't like this. You can't do that. You don't measure up. You did. And I, when I graduated high school, I was like, how do I survive? I went into the military and they showed me a system. And that system was the things that I heard when I was in church as it relates to, I need help. Because that's the message of going into church and getting involved with the church is that you need help, to be honest with you. You need help. And God is going to give you this help. But the actions were never demonstrated. And what I found out in the military is that there were systems in place that got you to the end result. And those systems demonstrated love when you had the same objective in mind. It was, it was those systems. And when I came up with sacrifice, attitude, um, courage, caring, um, humility, responsibility, tenacity, these are all of the things that we need to be able to express and demonstrate love in any and every, every kind of area in your life, whatever the circumstances are. You put those type of attitudes and employ them in your situation and they will automatically change your situation because it then it begins to change the perspective of the way you look at something. And as a result, it will in turn affect your actions that will in turn result or, or change or give you your output that you're looking for, you desire. Many of us don't know that our attitude is directly affect or directly connected to our outcome because it's that attitude that we act out that produce our outcome it's not by chance it have it's it's a system it's how it works so it doesn't have to be overly um hard to do it and and i think people overcomplicate things sometimes and whenever you break it down and kind of just put it into a system and, and it's like hard as a human being to hear that like really it's just a system and that's all we are is just a system you know what I'm saying and and if we can just it, if you just not necessarily follow these practices but you know what I'm saying like if understanding the practices it's just a system that's all it is it redu it duplicates itself that's what life is that's what history we're living our our span of of this system of this cog, this wheel called humanity. And this is our time to be a part of this bigger system. What will we invest? I guess for me, it, and, and I know this is probably a question that would be hard to answer, is if everyone were to understand what love was, and let's say that love, you know, love, like what you're describing in your book and everyone understood this, um, and we all, you know what I'm saying? We, we all kind of take part in it and, in, and it makes sense for everyone. What type of world would we live in? Obviously, we wouldn't live in a divided world. We'd be unified. Um, I guess that's the answer, right? We would be in a unified world. That's a, that's a unified world. But as an individual, and, I, and I, I like to make it make the point very clear. The subtitle of the book is called The, 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 the Guide to Inner Peace, Contentment and Success. We've got to want and understand the value of peace. We all desire to have clarity of mind. It's where our decisions are made. It's where we solve problems. 
it's the way we determine how how our experiences will play out. And we are influenced in our minds to dictate and to determine what we're going to do. And if it's peaceful as that, we can maintain that peace. We can make sound decisions based on very based on information that is presented with humanity as the objective as to preserving see that peace we lose our peace and then we begin to compensate we begin to make adjustments that are based on circumstances instead of the fact that you want to maintain your peace we will do things because somebody else has done it or we want what somebody else has, not knowing that it's going to cost us our peace. And all we want at the end of the day is peace. That's it. That's all we want. I mean, I want, I, I, if I can lay my head on a pillow, eat food, feed my children and my family, have, have a place to cover me. At the end of the day, the bare necessities, everybody deserves that be able to lay there, have peace. And so many of us can't even recognize it, less more have it. Yeah, man. I, yeah, just the way that you, you're able to describe these things, it's to me, it's just like, it's like the book, it's the title of your book, Love Made Simple, man. Like, I've just never really wrapped my, I've never really thought about it the way that you have it. And that's why I love the podcast, man, is just to like spread people, help spread people's knowledge and what it is that they have to tell the world, but everyone does have that right. And we're nowhere even close in the world to where people can, you know, third world countries, other things like that, where those people may never get clarity, you know? I mean, well, but here's the point. You talk about third world countries and stuff. I would venture to say that people in third world countries have a little bit more peace than people in, in developed countries. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, I think what, like, the only thing is like they, they can't safely, you know, sleep at night with a, with a pillow underneath their head, you know, and they, it, other than that, <laughs> other than that, I agree. I completely agree. No, I, but, but, but when I, when I make that comment though, as it relates to um, um, having a pillow on their head, it, it's, it's almost as though whatever the norm is, you know, whatever the standard of your environment, your culture sure. is that everybody should be able to manage that and have that degree of peace. So I almost wonder in the, if in the Western world or Western civilization, you know, um, I wonder if that was like their main objective is like, Hey, we need to get love out of here. We don't want people to know what love is because if we do that, then we're going to have, I mean, they're going to be at the top forever. They'll never have to leave. And they just pass it down and pass it down and pass it down. And then you just always will have division and hate. Well, again, um, I think if we wanted to go in, and I'm, I'm trying not to go there, but I mean, the flip side of love is hate, okay? Um, Would you ever do a book on hate? No, no. And, and the reason being is because it, it, as you know, and as we all know, it's a little bit more, it's natural, unless it's, it, I'm not gonna say never. <laughs> I'm just, I'm saying it comes a little bit more natural. And unfortunately, and to some degree, by making this statement that I'm making now, it brings forth how, how subtle hate is, how subtle it is. Um, because division is hate. So, I, so you, I, you take that you take that any way you want to go with it. Oh no, for sure. Um, I, I think I kind of asked you earlier. I don't know if I. Um, whenever you whenever you found out and you started practicing these things, was it like instant clarity? Like, did you absolutely? <laughs> and it's been, absolutely, and it's been clarity since then. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how long? Tell you. How long? Are, how, how long? I mean, like at what age? Because I mean, I have been on this particular journey probably, probably about ten to twelve years. So I was about thirty-five. 
so that that feeling in your head, that constant feeling, whenever you're like you're going to work and you're like, you can just feel the tightness in your head. You can just feel it because it's like, man, this isn't what I was put on this earth to do is serve bar drinks or be a manager at a restaurant. Like that's how I, you know, I've always had those thoughts and I'm, I'm looking, I'm like a rat looking for light at the, you know, I'm like, it's stuck in a maze and I can't get out. You know what I'm saying? But, but let's be clear. Um, I have a purpose. We all have that purpose at this, at the, at the very fundamental, we all have that same purpose is to protect and preserve humanity. Now, all of us has uniquenesses in us as it relates to how, what our part in that is. Right. That's just basically being able to identify who we are uniqueness. So many of us never find out that uniqueness in us and we settle. A lot of the things that, that um, we come into, we find out, we find ourselves in places where we have to react instead of act in line with who we are. We have to react to what someone else has done or said. The biggest clarity for me was, to be honest with you, when when I realized that I had a uniqueness, I was unique. When I found my value, there was really nothing anybody could tell me in the sense of, because now, but my motivation was to give it. It wasn't to hoard it. It was to give my value. It made... It, the whole picture had to come together, but one of the big things was that I had to first do some things with myself to understand that I had value. Now, it doesn't mean that I can't improve it or increase it, but I had value where I was. And that matter, that's just like everybody. We have to recognize that what we have is important, is sufficient, and is necessary. It's not, it's not as though you compare yourself to anybody. So how do people, no. how do people channel that though? How do they, how are they able to channel that thought process and get that out there? Because I mean, for some people it might be hard and they're like, well, Juan, like I, I, I get where you're coming from, but like, how do I do that? You know? And I know like practicing these steps, would you say that risk and maybe sacrifice are the same thing? Because to me, it seems like ri- there's a lot of risk that's involved in order to do this. Absolutely. And that's why it's very important that one of the primary things, are, and, and it's, and it's necessary because if you're not willing to sacrifice your own will and to think because you're, you're, you're willing to say, you know, for the sake of humanity, my personal, my personal opinion is not as important as the collective of humanity. It's not. And then that's, and that's a sacrifice that, that in and of itself is a sacrifice. You've got to be willing to say that the bigger picture is more important than myself. Now, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people because a lot of different people in a lot of different places, okay? But only you can say it. Only you can say that. And that might mean that you do it marginally or or, or on on a, on a, on a step-by-step basis. You've got to determine it, but that mindset has to be conscious. It has to be a consciousness. And all I'm doing is, is being a facilitator. I'm all I'm doing is saying, be aware that you have what it takes. You have what it takes. And nobody can stop you. You've just got to embrace the understanding that you got it. We got the power. We've got to understand that it's at our disposal. Now, what will we do with it? We can either suppress it or we can practice it. So uh, within your book, and I know I'm sure you uh, have family members read it and they've kind of pra- not, you know, implemented this into their life, <laughs> friends, family, any, any readers out there that you've had experiences with where you've changed I, their I, lives. There are people who read it and you can, you can see those people on, um, um, I've been sharing this message for probably 25 years. Man, nah, 20 years. Um, but it was under the auspice of uh, of religion. Um, it wasn't until I wrote the book and I began to separate the two that I began because pe- this, these these are new these are not new concepts. Ultimately, these are all choices, and everybody has that one thing that makes this difficult. And that's their own will. 
they have the will to make love um, where it will not fail. Or they here's the kicker though, they don't compare, they won't, they won't acknowledge love if it fails, if something fails, but not understanding that it, the reason that you have failure is because you chose not to love. It's some deep stuff, man. <laughs> I mean, it's really not, but it, you know what I'm saying? For some people that is, I mean, that it just goes on a, on a level, you know, I'm, again, I'm going to have to like re-listen to this podcast because like just the way you, you put it, just, it makes it make sense. Just choices. They're, they're always there. They're always going to be there. And that from the beginning, like you said, from birth to death, like that's something that every single human being has shared that has lived on this earth. They've shared the same thing. They've all had choices and we all have a right to have those choices. And we, you know, just finding love and just, I don't know, man, it's just, yeah, I can only hope and pray for, for something like that to con- like take over the, not take over the world, but you know what I'm saying? Just spread. If anything well, were to spread, it would be that. I, I, again, I, I, I'm embraced to be those, be around to be able to, to share the need and, and to, to light the fire. Um, that hopefully, because that's all it is. It's I, I just want I just want to enlighten and share the power of love. And that's what that's I've it. I've been trying to find that. And when we when we I, like I said, I've been doing the podcast for three years, and we've had like 180 episodes, and you know, uh, quite a few guests, quite a few authors, stuff like that. And we're always just like looking for the answers when they're kind of just in plain sight. It's just in plain sight and in it's up to you and up to the person to try and find that. But honestly, having people like you who exist, Juan, it does make it a little bit easier. Technology has made it easier for you and I to talk and to spread this type of message. And, and it was meant to be, man. It was meant to be. Your choices have affected a lot of people. And um, I'm not saying that you have all the answers, but like to me, these, those are it's just, it's just the simplest one. And it's the one that makes the most sense. And it doesn't really require much. It's just you, it's installed in us. Working. You, you said it perfectly. I mean, that's, that's the message. It's you have the power to make the difference that we all desire for it to be, you know, for that difference to be. Well, and, and again, I think just like, like I said, I was set to listen back and, and honestly, I need to finish your book. I got a, you know almost halfway into it, um, but just not overthinking it and not, uh, and just, you know, just simplify it. It doesn't have to be that hard. And then I think for me, like when I think about this, I'm like, how would I, uh, practice this in everyday life and make sure that I continue to do it? Um, that's like the hard part for me. Like, it's just like thinking like, how am I going to do this every single day for the next however many years <laughs> when it, when in all actuality, I don't need to think like that at all. I just need to take it day by day. Cause every choice is going to be different a year from now to 10 years from now. What's, what's the motivation for the choice? Right. You know, I think that's the it's the goal that drives the the decision or the choice with the perspective. And I think um, that attitude that that will generate that perspective is what if we can if we can begin to entertain those attitudes. And then you begin to say, OK, which attitude do I need to employ here that not only do you know, does that does it does humanity win in this situation? See, sacrifice is always going to be in there, and that's where it really begins to be a rub. And so, what I'm saying is, is you don't get past that sacrifice. It's going to be every day is going to be a new challenge, but sacrifice is going to be in there, and that's the part where we we have a we have trouble in our day to day thing because, and 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 let me put this in there. One of the things that makes it difficult is to our, our division, how we view things is based on the perspective coming from how we've been divided. Okay, so that means that even in we reading, even when we experiencing things, we've got to try to break down these divides. We've really got to break them down because we can't even hear and think if we having those divides that are gonna be shaping our opinions and our thoughts. So that's again, it's a common, this is something that's going to be a constant 
because we have to overcome some, some things that have been innately built into us. And that's what the challenge is gonna be day to day is that we've gotta break them down. We've gotta pull down the divides. You know, having conversations like this, I feel like is, is a step into doing that. I mean, because I, th- I feel like those divides, again, they've, they've, they've been a part of what it is to be human for such a long time. And again, it's, it's a choice for all of us to say, hey, we don't want that anymore. Like, I'm not going to turn on the news and, and continue to watch this divide because it's no longer needed. And it never really was needed because, like you said, humanity needs each other. And that's just what I'm ready for, man. I'm, I'm ready for people not to just consume and consume and consume and then just continue to continue to continue to per- perpetuate divide. I just can't do it anymore, man. I love everyone. I'm a human being. I'm on this, this, this earth to just, you know, enjoy my life. And now, you know, having these podcasts, like I said, now I know that there's going to be sacrifice required for all of humanity to enjoy it the same way. I don't know. I don't know if that made sense or not, but. Absolutely. It makes sense. But that's, that's what history, anything that's in history is, is gotten us to this point. Right. And we are going to be a part of history. And what will we be leaving? What will be the message that we are leaving to the next generation? And see, this that is, we we help promote division, or that we started to bring people together. That's what I'm saying, man. And this is cyclical of me. And you know, um, it's just like I said, the, the the Victor writes history. And if we let this to continue, what's to say that our story would even be told? Absolutely. And that's frustrating to me. And I think that the movement that you're not the movement or your knowledge that you're trying to create and and give to the masses or whoever wants to listen, not even to the masses. That's the that's the that's the choice that needs to happen. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, you you have my legacy on your desk. Yep. That's 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 if if I'm not here, that's my legacy. Um. You pick that up and it presents something even a hundred years from now that's different than it is um, yesterday. There is another option. There is another way. It's a choice. You have it. I have it. Every one of us have it to make a difference. Yes, sir. Well, I want to greatly appreciate your time, man. We're a little bit over the hour. Um, how can we find you? Where can we find your book? Uh, those will be in the links to, in the description below. Any plugs you want to throw out there? Anything like that? Well, what I want to, I want to, yes, really much so. Um, I'm actually going to be putting out a course um, next month. Um, the course is going to be how to navigate life. Um, it's based on the foundation of love, but it gives the practical application of love, giving you the systems that you need to be able to employ, to be able to navigate life. It's going to be coming out. Anybody who's interested, please, you know, info me at uh, info at wanleetheauthor.com. It's going to be a, a web-based um, program. Um, also, I just wanted to let you know that I have a nonprofit that is the umbrella of everything. The, and the nonprofit is called Clear Journey. Um, we basically bring clarity to life. That's basically what it's all about, giving um, attitudes and life skills to teenagers, young adults. Um, And that's the umbrella for everything. So whenever you purchase a book or you buy a book or anything, or you purchase the course, it all supports the nonprofit um, to basically trying to give teenagers and young adults a clearer path in life, similar to the the ends of each of the book, the chapters of the book where it talks a pathway to a pathway to success. That's basically what we're doing, giving them the tools for success. Um, also, you can all please come to my website. Um, it's uh, wanleetheauthor.com. You can actually purchase the ebook on my website, but if you want the book, you can also go to amazon.com, you know, Amazon or Barnes and Noble and get the book. But I, you know, really helps if you buy the ebook and you get it from the website. Um, but yeah. Um, that's all of it. I'm on all of the, the, the social media platforms, um, uh, in, in LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm also, as a matter of fact, um, going, uh, I have a spot on, uh, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Clubhouse. I'm on Clubhouse yeah. now also. That's awesome. So you can reach me or hear me and see me uh, in various places all over the social media platforms. 
Yeah, and if you don't mind, just shoot me an email of all your social media platform, like just your your handle or whatever for Instagram okay. or and I'll just put in the links below. Is all I'm saying. But um, gotcha. one, one last gotcha. question for you, man: Are you planning on writing another book? Everybody's uh, everybody's asking me that. Um, I have been writing constantly. Um, this course is probably the biggest thing that I'm trying to get um, in place. Once that's done. The nonprofit has a lot of work to do. Um, so I, it's in the future, but I just don't know exactly when um, because I really want the people to grasp Love Made Simple. Um, and so what the course is doing is really making it the practical application of love. This is how I came to that book, Love Made Simple. It was the steps to getting there. So. It's in the future, but I don't know where it's going to be, when it's going to be. I got you, my man. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on Talk Junkies, man. Um, you know, I, appreci- yeah, if you ever- I appreciate you having me. I really do. I thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to your audience. Uh, again, whomever and how often, if you like to have me back, I'm one more than able and willing to come back and we can we can dig into this a little bit more. Oh, for sure, man. But it I, it would have to be a Sunday night because that's when Johnny <laughs> Johnny and Jesse are able to be here, and you'll love them, man. They're they're cool I'll guys, make so. I'll make the I'll make the uh, I'll make the uh, the arrangements. The uh, the I'll change that for that case. Rock on, man. Well, I'll shoot you an email here in a couple months. And we'll get that figured out. But uh, Juan, all right, Lee, I appreciate you, man. You have a great, fantastic day. Appreciate your time and and your knowledge, man. Thank you very much. All righty, you have a great one. Thanks a lot. You too. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Juan Lee, the author. Check him out. All the links in the description will be below. Um, great and fantastic podcast. Uh, just check it out. And usually Johnny and I and Jesse talk about some stuff after the podcast, but they're not here, so I'm not going to talk to myself. So the best thing you can do for this channel and for this video is to hit the like button, subscribe, um, and share this video. There's a lot of in- great knowledge that Juan had to be shared, honestly, in my opinion. And the only way to, to help that is just to spread it, is just to share it. Give it, go into your phone, your contacts list, and then collect, select all and then press share. You know, that's, that would travel pretty fast. But anyways, thank you very much to all our junkies out there. Stay fly and ring the bell.